I have yeah. asked Doug every time we've communicated, I have asked Doug to tell me exactly what it is he's unhappy with in the book Last of the Giants. And Brandon, I still have the replies. And God bless him. They're kind of psychotic. They're rambling. He's telling me about talking to God. Um, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to embarrass the guy, but I realized, um, I realized he needed help. Oh, yeah. So let me help you, Doug, by screwing you over. I'm going to tell people that I'm going to tell you that I'm going to put you and Peter Grant on the Mount Rushmore of rock and roll managers. And then when the book comes out, I look like a used car sales guy and he can't understand why he'd be upset. <laughs> he's, he's an idiot. I mean, he's, he has screwed so many people over in his book writing by getting it wrong. Uh, I'm not the only guy. I mean, there's plenty of books done by Mick Wall that the artists that they're talking about or two, um, he's factually incorrect and people are pissed off at him. He's a sycophant who makes money off of other people's stories. And he lied to me by saying, you know, you are going to, I'm going to tell the real story about how you were the guy to keep it together. Well, no, he didn't. You know, Brandon, what he ended up saying about me. Um, some very derogatory things. Um, he gave Nevin credit for everything, which just did not take place the way that Mick Wall makes a sound. Um, you know, why Stephanie Brownstein decided to chuck me under the bus and support Alan. To this day, I'll never understand that. She's the one that told me that he had hired a black magic specialist and, and brought the guy to L.A. She specifically wanted to call me to a lunch to tell me that. So it's not like I'm, you know, making this stuff up as I go yeah. along. And I, this is, we're going back six years. So I cannot remember the numbers. So this could well... Hey, apparently I'm no good with facts, okay? So <laughs> it was something like, you know, for just $3 million, you know, we could be the co-owners of this coffee. Pretty sure it was a coffee plantation or something that could be turned into one or something. And I'm thinking, um, I don't have that kind of money. And I've only been to Hawaii once and I love so that all sounds good, but uh, this is... Yeah, and, the, and, and by the way, and how that transpired is he's telling me about how much he loves Hawaii. I have this property over there. At the time, I'm thinking that I'm going to be on the Mount Rushmore of rock and roll managers. So I'm thinking, you know what? I mean, the guy loves Hawaii. I have no idea what his income is, uh, what he has put away or what he doesn't. Um, so I made him an offer. To, hey, you, I mean, if you love Hawaii that much, I've got this coffee farm that pre-exists already. Right? You want to go into partnership on it? Cool. Because at the time, I'm thinking that the guy is an advocate of mine who's going to really tell the story about what really transpired. And we all know now that didn't happen. And that's typical McWall. 